Hello and welcome everybody to the USG Alumni Talks. My name is Dania. I work for the American Center Tashkent and it's Air Quality Awareness Week. And today we will be talking about air pollution and challenges associated with it. And to discuss this incredibly important topic, we have invited an expert in this field, Jasulbek Hajayev. Welcome Jasulbek and thank you so much for joining us today. So, uh, good evening, uh, Dana. Uh, thank you very much for giving me this chance to be part of this talk. And I hope uh, today we'll discuss very important topics, Le learn new things and start working on. Right, thank you. Let me uh, briefly introduce you to our audience. Jasulbek Hajayev is an assistant professor at Inha University in Tashkent. He has uh, 15 years of experience working in R&D from South Korea, Ireland, USA, and other countries. He majors in information and communication engineering and interested in sensor technologies to detect environmental pollutions, including air pollution. Jasurbe participated in the IVLP US exchange program in 2019. So before we get started, we want to thank all of you who have joined us today. Please ask your questions as we are live on Facebook and YouTube, and our guest speaker will answer them during and after the session. Okay, Jasrbek, I am giving the floor to you. Let's start off with the presentation. Okay, thank you, Dania. So, uh, so the, uh, let's start the, the, uh, today's talk. So, the Dania has introduced that today will, the the topic will be about the air pollution, right? Which is the, and the, uh, which is a part of the climate change uh, or the uh, side effect. So um, again, uh, uh, my name is Jasper Bikojev. So uh, I was the alumni uh, uh, of the IVLP program, and at the same time, I'm the uh, nowadays the uh, the professor, uh, assistant professor at Inha University in Tashkent. So uh, let's start. Uh, let's start uh, today's talk. But before we start, I would like to ask you a very simple question, so you can try to answer in the chat room, or uh, to have your answer to yourselves. Then uh, you can compare to mine. Um, then let let's see. To, uh, let's check it. Okay. So, uh, what do you see? Daniel, you can also try to answer if you if you would like, please. Uh, on the presentation on the slide yes can, can you actually make it uh, as a full screen it is uh, nothing we, right uh, we see it uh, as like a regular presentation but blank make... right nothing no we we can see your presentation but um, if you make it on the like on the full screen that would be great. So, I see okay. a cloud. Like Oops. No. Um, can you make it like, uh, as it was before? No. Uh, the point is, uh, just tell me whatever you see. Oh, is it blank? I see gray, I dark? See a gray screen. Gray screen. Nothing, right? Nothing. Like uh, there is nothing in the in the screen. Oh, so yes. the the point okay. is, yeah, it was a kind of intriguing uh, starting question. Yes. So uh, why I am showing you this kind of uh, like uh, kind of nothing uh, page the, uh, is because the 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 air pollution is kind of invisible enemy enemy, enemy for us. Mm -hmm. So when you go daily to, to go when you go to your work to to when you go to your school university, or just going outside to do the uh, exercise. You do not see the air pollution, isn't it? So, uh, so that's why uh, I, I, I I would like to give kind of a, a, a definition to the air pollution as an uh, invisible enemy. So, uh, once uh, well, when you do not see your enemy, it is difficult to do something. So mm -hmm. to fight about it. So uh, f that's why the first uh, one of the first things to combat this kind of uh, the invisible enemy is to make it uh, visible or to quantify it. So for this one, we have different types of sensors and technologies which we are going to talk in this lecture. So moving on. 
So uh, we will talk about their position. Just uh, some of you may know, or some of you may not know, what is the, the about their position. So let uh, so let's uh, so that's why um, let's try to uh, the um, talk from the beginning, like by answering the question, what is it? So and then uh, we'll talk how dangerous is it? Because uh, the air pollution, maybe we didn't listen for a long time in the uh, like in the mainstream media. Uh, but uh, in the recent years, uh, like uh, it, it became so frequent, like uh, every other day, you can uh, hear about the new news about this uh, the air pollution all over the world because it's becoming real problem. So uh, because it has a huge impact on the the population or the in general life on Earth. So, um, but the, uh, another the the problem associated with the air pollution is it doesn't have borders. Like uh, the okay, uh, maybe you can take care of like a locally like a water treatment, right? Uh, for uh, something like this, you can do locally like recycling. Uh, but uh, when you have uh, the problem with the air, air does not have uh, the borders, or it will not stay in one over the one country. So the air travels uh, through the world. So uh, like any country who is polluting the air will be responsible like worldwide because the uh, the, the uh, one um, the fact may, maybe uh, some of the local people might know uh, from the Uzbekistan that uh, when the Aral Sea dried up the some salts from the seabed uh, were found in arctic ocean in the arctic ice so you can imagine like something is happening like in the, in the deep in central asia uh, you can see its impact on the on the other end of the world. So, um, so, so that's why, uh, like the, the the to combat the air pollution, it is like a, it's a worldwide um, effort has to be because it's very, uh, also expensive and difficult. So, if you look at the uh, the definition of it, like air pollution uh, refers to the release of pollutants into the air uh, that are detrimental to human health and the plant as a whole. So in general, uh, most of the, the air pollution in our air comes from the, the energy sector, uh, the energy sector. So the production of the energy and to the, uh, the usage of the energy. So the production is, uh, uh, as you, uh, you, you might guess, is like we, uh, like, uh, we excavate the oil uh, right from the ground, uh, then we also burn uh, coal to generate energy uh, and, and so on. So here we uh, the, uh, the generate uh, produced energy. So uh, they are the one of the uh, main pollutants, right? And then we have the another major pollutant uh, is the uh, our transportation systems on land, sea, and air. So uh, those are our um, like sources of um, like the major sources of our uh, the pollution. So moving on, um, in general, there are many different types of pollutants as well. Uh, types uh, like uh, so, we can divide them into gases. So in terms of gases, we have ammonia, carbon dioxide, so, uh, sulfur dioxide, methane, and so on. There are uh, several of them. Then we have particular matter, like they could be organic or inorganic. They are very small matter, like uh, uh, the size of uh, two and a half. Uh, like usually they measure in microns like two and a half micron in diameter or 10 microns or even we have um, one micron uh, particulate matters so uh, they're very dangerous we'll talk about it so then we have biological molecules and so on the problem with this uh, the pollutants is if the diameter of the pollutant is very small like uh, two and a half and less um, um, micrometers so if they're very small, uh, the human body has very difficult, uh, or it cannot uh, get rid of them from the body because they are very small. So uh, the, so that's why uh, when the, the, the researchers, scientists, when they calculate the air quality index, the particular matter, uh, the measurements are one of the key uh, ingredients or the parameters of that air quality index. So um, then, uh, another uh, the, um, important part uh, of the uh, the pollutants uh, we call it smog and soot. 
Smog is a kind of, uh, the, the, the word itself is, uh, comes from the smog and like fog we have. So uh, if, the, if you merge them, so you have smog, or it has a different name, they call it ground level ozone. So it occurs when the emission from the combusting uh, for uh, the fossil fuels react with the sunlight. As you know, in the, the big cities, when the, you have lots of uh, semi-trucks, right, the big diesel cars, uh, then you have lots of um, <clears throat> private cars. And then all of them, like uh, in the morning time, they're going to their jobs, right? So uh, all of them, they're like uh, uh, the using like an uh, uh, internal combusting engine like they, they're using. So the, uh, the, all this, uh, the smoke going uh, to the, uh, the, the air, and then um, it goes to the air. Uh, then uh, when the sun, uh, this ultraviolet lights, they hit this, those small, tiny molecules. So then they turn into uh, like a ground level ozone, so which is really bad. So uh, for the human health, initially in low dose, it can make your eyes irritate, or uh, for the the allergies. Some if, if some people have allergies, so they will have uh, difficulty in breathing, and so on. So then we have another one is like a suit, or we just uh, I have just explained it's a particulate matter right so they are made up very tiny particles so it could there could be uh, uh, any types of uh, let's say the matter in this particular matter just the uh, uh, they are particular matter because of the size okay so they could be the particles of some uh, chemicals so it could be from the soil or smoke or dust or allergens so they are usually in the form of a gas or solids so, because they're very small, uh, they are carried in the air. So, they travel from one place to another one very easily. So, um, the the uh, here I would like to quote the, uh, the, uh, the, 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 the statement from the Environmental Protection Agency uh, from the United States, like uh, for the last uh, several centuries, the pollution has reduced the, the distance and the clarity of what we see what we see uh, now by 70%. So that is a huge difference, right? So a little bit exaggerated uh, example I would uh, like to give you in the next uh, slide. So here you can see the, uh, the same, uh, this picture on the left side and right side were taken from the same spot uh, with 10 days difference. So this is from, uh, from the China. So on the left side, you can clearly see the smog, right? So it ascends, uh, the, um, so it descends over the city. So um, then on the right, so you cannot see very far uh, places, right? Uh, on the right side, uh, so in the clear sunny day, you can see that uh, you can see very far, far uh, places from the same spot. So when you actually bring those two pictures, then you can uh, like judge the severity of the uh, air quality in that uh, place. So uh, well, there, there's also um, one city, I forgot the name, uh, in China. Like um, if, you, uh, if you stay in that city for one day, so it is uh, the damage to your lungs, your, uh, your, your, your health is the same as you're smoking uh, like one pack of cigarette in, per day. So, uh, but nowadays uh, China is like initiating really good, uh, lots of green technologies. They want to get rid of all these ICU engines and replace with electrical cars. So um, for the local viewers also, we have similar situation in the, uh, mostly uh, in That's the so Afghan. Uh, yes. I'm so sorry. Um, we only see one slide. Could you please change the slides or? Um... No, I didn't change it so, yet. This is about city, right? Do you see the city? No, we still see the gray screen. Oh, excuse me, please. Yes. How about now? Yes, now it's correct. So I'm really sorry. So I don't okay. know what's happening. Um, just uh, if, if there's any problem, please uh, interrupt me and just let me know. Sure, so the you. the thing I was talking about smog here is on the left side. You see, uh, mm -hmm. there's a yes. big difference between left and right from the same. Uh, this is the same city. 
So, um, uh, also, I, I, I would like to recommend you whenever you uh, go to uh, trip uh, early, usually early in the morning, try to look uh, from the window. And if you see this kind of, uh, uh, so it could be also a fog as well, but like in the, um, like, uh, in like in the sunny and uh, um, in summer, for example, month. So if you see this kind of uh, like uh, smoke, so it's most probably this, the air condition is really, really bad. So it's also not recommended to go outside and do the exercise, okay? So um, now let's move on to the next slide. So, Daniel, can you see now you have, we have, do we have the new slides? No, we still see the previous one. Okay, yeah. then I'll do just one by one, it's no problem. So now, uh, the, what the air pollution may cause. So it causes diseases for sure. Uh, then uh, allergies uh, in extreme cases, it causes also death to humans. So besides that, it, it, it also uh, caused the harm to other living organisms, like we have animals, food, crop, the, the whole environment itself. So um, the next one, I will shift. Okay, uh, the how the air pollution um, like uh, impacts the human health. So it is the, uh, nowadays it's like, it plays a significant role. Um, in the in the hu uh, in the the I'd say the development of different types of uh, disease. Um, so uh, like um, even nowadays uh, they start to to uh, I'd say the differentiate the types of disease like a pollution related disease, right? So like a new category of um, um, diagno diagnosing uh, of the patients, uh, which is like. Uh, depends on the the environment so uh the air pollution is the number one it, it damages the human's respiratory uh um, in the organs then uh then it will go to the heart disease and the pulmonary disease stroke and even lung cancer it can cause so um but, uh, for this uh, if you would like to see i i would uh, like to uh, I, I can I recommend you to have uh, just to Google about the statistics or statistics of the heart disease in the the like uh, big um, like uh, megapolis like uh, metropolitan areas and suburbs. Okay, so if you calculate this average value, then you can see that there is a huge um, the spike in these uh, densely populated uh, <clears throat> cities. So even the the heart disease, the, the also lung uh, cancer and so on so all of them are um, like you can clearly see this uh, the difference between the uh, megapolis metropolitan area and suburban areas for example so um okay um a few stats the the sad part of this um their pollution is uh, just to uh, if you consider uh, okay the the outdoor uh, you know the, the air pollution so usually we have two types like indoor air pollution outdoor so the, the only because of this outdoor air pollution alone, every year it causes two 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 point one to uh, four point twenty one million death uh, annually. So um, this is worldwide, and uh, if you uh, also take into account the the indoor air pollution and the other types of the pollutions as well. So the overall the air pollution causes death of around 7 million people worldwide each year. And this number is uh, increasing uh, ever since. So uh, that's why we have to be very cautious and uh, try to do um, our part, as, even though uh, we feel it is uh, very small, but if uh, all of us do together, so it will have for sure an impact. So uh, <clears throat> another thing, uh, another the impact uh, of their pollution is they uh, it is um, damage to our economy. So the uh, the productivity losses and the uh, the the great quality of life uh, caused by air pollution are estimated to cost the world economy like a five trillion uh, dollars per year. So um, 
again, like here, like think about like uh, when the person, like right, the the workers, if they get uh, and if you have a really bad, um, how to say, it's like a very polluted air, so they will become sick more often, right? So if they if the workers are becoming uh, like sick more often, so they will not go to the work, they cannot do the quality work, and then um, so the, here we have losses right from work. Then those people go to these uh, like uh, locally, they get uh, some different types of treatments and so on. So if you calculate all of them, uh, there's a huge loss uh, in the economy. So. And then, uh, so this number also itself could be a really good motivator uh, to world leaders to uh, invest in the um, like uh, green technologies and uh, like uh, the environmentally environmentally uh, friendly uh, technologies, right? So, um, okay, the, the other example I will talk in next exam, uh, the, the interesting one. So uh, how uh, how to see the visualize our um, the enemy like this invisible enemy? For this one, we have uh, like uh, usually the, the the air quality is monitored by the government agencies. So uh, they usually they have state of the art equipment like these big boxes. Uh, like uh, uh, when you travel again, like uh, uh, I would like you to pay attention on the roads. Like you can see. Uh, for example, in USA, when I ha when I have visited, I have seen lots of these types of uh, reference grade like air quality monitoring stations all over the highways, the cities. So they do they keep they do keep track of the all the uh, parameters in the air, and then they, it reports to the government. And then uh, why the government uh, the um, body has to do it because they have the the force right they have the capability to force. The heavy polluters to comply uh, with the regulations. So the, also uh, the non-government organizations about the uh, environment are also very um, active in the United States, which I really liked. So uh, they usually are um, like um, how to say it? They, they don't have this kind of very expensive equipment. Instead, they have uh, like a very small. Uh, handheld uh, the air quality uh, the sensors like you can see I'm holding one with my hand so uh, what they do uh, uh, um, they go to schools neighborhoods they install it they go to schools and they uh, raise the awareness they teach kids how to uh, like uh, be aware of the air pollution right uh, what times you have you can see there is a like a peak and the um, Different types of gas, uh, gas amount of gases, or the dust, right? The amount of dust uh, in particular areas. So I have seen, like uh, in California, when we have visited California for clean air, non-government organization. So they went to school and then they gave distributed the sensors to the students. So the students they go and then check the uh, perimeter of the school at different times. So and then they found out that the, the most the polluted uh, the time um, around the school is in the, the, the early in the morning and uh, in the evening part, uh, in, in the evening time. So when the parents come to drop off their kids and the, the, because they have, when they keep uh, waiting, when, when they wait for their children, right, their engine is on. So there, there are lots of uh, the exhaust is going to the air, so um, so they have shown this one. And then, uh, the, what was the, the interesting for me was like those students they presented their uh, the ideas or their found uh, their research to their parents, like about like when do you wait for us, like when your engine is on, it is actually harming us. So then they start to uh, like uh, some parents they start to like uh, shut down the engine. Uh, which is really good impact. So the people are aware what's happening and they know, and then they can also do their part in order to, um, how to say, um, the reduce their pollution. Okay. So something I would like to, uh, okay. Next, um, a few things about the uh, um, online tools I would like to share with you, which is really good. This one I found out when I have visited. Uh, and talk with the uh, environmental um, 
the uh, officers at uh, the U.S. Embassy. So there is a, the, call, uh, the app called uh, Air Visual. So you can download for your Android and uh, the iPhones. So it looks like this kind of uh, the icon, right? So uh, if you open it, uh, the United States Embassy, they have installed the reference grade, really high quality uh, air quality monitoring stations uh, in their uh, the, um, campus. So that you can go and search the Tashkent and then uh, you can put your favorites. So uh, th this one you, see, you can see, uh, it gives you the air quality index all the time. So this one, I, I have just taken the, uh, the screenshot around uh, 2.30 uh, p.m. So it was like um, the quality was moderate. So, and then also they can show you the uh, the forecast. So here you can see around the the, the um, midnight the the condition worsens. So and then uh, you can also watch the map uh, uh, all uh, all around the uh, the like Central Asia, like all around the world. You can see. So one thing I would like you to pay attention. You see uh, this place is in China. This is China, because they have huge number of manufacturing facilities right the factories so you can see they have really bad uh, conditions uh, really bad weather you they have maybe you have noticed it when you watch like um like uh, cnn or bbc uh, news right and uh, here you can see also in the um, uh, urumqi uh, shenzhen um not shenzhen xinjiang i think yes uh, the <clears throat> where the uyghurs they live you know so they, this is the worst, you know, uh, the, the indicator, like over 700 points. Is The color is even purple, you know. This is really bad, uh, the extremely. So here you can see this um, classification on the right side. Uh, this app also gives you some guides of what you can do, what you cannot do. So the purple one is like very unhealthy. So maybe they have like a, some uh, chemical plants leaking. So nevertheless, it's really good. And then, and then I, for example, I every day I use this app to keep uh, track of the, the the air quality index and the, around the Tashkent. It's really useful um, and uh, like very light app. So I recommend you to install it, and uh, all the time you can use it. So uh, here I can see um, another thing is. Uh, let me show you with uh, zoom in. Okay, I hope you can see now. So the outdoor, <coughs> sorry, uh, outdoor we have 86, uh, like the, this is just the index. If it is low, that means it is good. If it's high, it's bad. So the here you can see this, uh, there's PM, what we were just talking about, right? Particular matter, two and a half microns. So uh, their um, the amount is 29 micrograms per meter cube. So in that case, it is like a moderate case. So when you have more than that, so it becomes, of course, uh, unhealthy, bad, and so on. So what we have to do if we have this uh, yellow warning sign, so it is moderate, so sensitive individuals should avoid outdoor activities as they may experience respiratory symptoms. So I think moderate is okay, or good to moderate. So then we have, sometimes I have seen in Tashkent, we have these unhealthy situations. So if you have, uh, you have to be very um, cautious about it. Uh, the, um, okay, this is about the um, the app. So actually, uh, the um, what Uzbekistan also uh, is trying nowadays learn from the other developed countries, and it's also trying to uh, enroll its own the air uh, the pollution monitoring networks. So for this one, if you we have a website, I don't know you you knew it or not. So the address is monitoring that If you go there. So the, they have, uh, they don't, of course, they don't have that many uh, the stations as developed countries, but hello, we just started, we have it, right? So it's a good start. So there you can see uh, the, uh, the green means it's uh, relatively good. The yellow is moderate and uh, there's those orange. I mean, you have to be cautious, right? So all over the Uzbekistan in Maine, like a dense populated areas, they have sensors. And you can zoom in, and then you can choose, and uh, you, can, you can see that in real time um, the condition of your neighborhood or your city. So here is the examples I took at 2 p.m. today. So this one uh, uh, from the Chilanzar uh, uh, the district, um, the near the um, 
Pahla Dosigi um uh what is it, concert hall like in the um, like Bunyatkar um street. So uh here you can see they have a dioxide uh, sulfur, I guess, right? Ammonia, uh carbon monoxide, uh, and so on. We have PM two and a half, PM10 here you can see the ozone. So the PM two and a half, uh, it was two twenty two point four, but uh, so this one is based on the, our government's um, scale on the uh, air quality index. Usually, uh, different countries or uh, they have they might have their own uh, scale of um, like uh, classification of the condition of the air. So like if you go to the uh, the, the the previous uh, okay uh, this app right. So they call it uh, the air quality index, AQI they use. So here is, if you have 25 um, micrograms per meter cube, um, PM 2.5, okay, it is moderate. So, but here you see if you have 22.5, so it is in green, uh, in green um, uh, region. So more or less they have small differences. So it, it, it might be due to this, uh, uh, when they take into account the, the local, um, how to say, the factors. So, uh, okay, this is this is the, those are our measurements. So, the, another interesting things I would like to show you. So, also you have to pay attention. I will ask you a very small, a really good question. So, this one is in Chilanzar uh, district. So, the block twenty. Okay. So uh, they took it the measurements. So here you can see this. Um, the things uh, okay. The carbon monoxide we have the uh, the five okay the the index. So then we have um, what uh, nitrate uh, monox uh, dioxide, so zero point zero six okay, and the phen phen uh, phenol um, then we have zero point zero zero five and ammonia is zero point zero one. Okay, this is in the um, this uh, Chilanzar district uh, block twenty. So AQI, uh, according to the um, <coughs> this, sorry, yeah, so uh, uh, organization. Uh, yeah, you can you cannot see again. We are on the slide number fourteen, right? Yeah. No. Yeah, I, I I'm really sorry. I forgot to uh, shift like this. So for okay. some reason, my screen is not properly showing. So here's the uh, the website I was talking to you. Uh, okay, uh, this is monitoring.meteo.us. So on the real time and the map, you can see the um, the data from the, um, the air quality monitoring stations all, all around Uzbekistan. So then uh, the thing, uh, then we have uh, uh, here. So some of the screenshots I took, uh, this is from the city, uh, the, the uh, near the city center we have. Uh, can you see this one, a small pop-up window? This is Chilansar, uh, the block 20. One second. Uh, so I see the slide number 16. Is that yes, correct? yes. Uh, so, yes, yeah, but uh, the window I'm showing is just a pop up. So, on no. the left corner, it's written number 26. No, I don't think. Okay, then uh, let me do this uh, the other way around. So, this one. Mm. So uh, I think that you can see this one right now. Yeah, the forecast. Yeah. Yes. So on the on the top here on the top we have uh, this is from the um, this is from the Chilanzar, okay, the block twenty. So uh -huh. can you see those uh, the, the th uh, three uh, red indicators, the blocks, squares, uh, three uh, red square. On right. The top block, yes. this one. You see, right? Right. Yeah, so right. here we have uh, uh, the amount of uh, carbon uh, monoxide, dioxide, and the phenol. They are very high. That's why they are on the red boxes, OK? So then uh, here on the second window here, we have uh, I have this screenshot from the station uh, from the church. So it's near the mountains. So usually we have really good quality uh, air quality index, right? The air, air quality is really good in our mountain areas. So here the air quality is like on the uh, right side. Here you can see on the inside yellow box, it's 5.78. Uh, 
But in Churchick, so here you can see this green, so 2.85. But my question is here for the audience. So um, if the Churchick area is near the, the mountains and uh, we, uh, all of us agree that they have really good quality of air, but why this ammonia, you see, it is seven times higher than the city. So the this Chilanzar Block 20 is like a it's very busy uh, place in our city. So if you compare in the uh, the Chirchik, we have this ammonia seven times higher than the city. So please think about it, why it could happen, okay? Then at the end, we can discuss it. Why um, we have ammonia, the amount of ammonia is seven times higher in the Chirchik than the uh the, the middle of the city so okay moving on um there are a few things uh which are very dangerous and uh, our like especially local people in rural areas do not take it uh, into account seriously so can you see that on the left side we have wood burning stove in winter time they use it for heating so um so here this one um uh, very, fa very famous in, in the rural areas. So uh, this one, when the people they use inside the uh, very uh, the closed doors, especially in the winter, they have to uh, make sure that they have really good ventilation. So sometimes they burn the coal and they sleep. And we have seen a few every year. We see tragic events every year because people fall asleep while this the coal was burning, right? So. Uh, this one, they have to pay special attention. So this also, it, it pollutes the air a lot. Another thing is, uh, I found really disturbing, is really uh, bad is, because of the cost of the furniture waste, especially those MDF uh, sheets. So uh, people, they use them for heating and cooking, especially in the rural areas. But um, the, this MDF, which we use in our uh, uh, the furniture, it contains formaldehyde. So this is really carcinogen uh, chemicals. It may, if it's used for a long time, like the whole winter you are heating your house and cooking with this furniture waste, it may cause cancer. Okay, so those are the uh, really bad and dangerous things people. Lots of people they have at home, especially in the uh, winter time. Um, then uh, also in the whole uh, village is burning the MDF with formaldehyde, so it, it will uh, harm each other. Like the whole cities, uh, the residents will be harmed by those um, very strong chemicals in the air. So now, um, so this was. Uh, those were the, my uh, like a, a small introduction to the uh, air pollution. So I, I'm also working. Uh, we are trying to develop the um, uh, the uh, like air uh, quality monitoring system for uh, RLC regions. So once we have, I hope I will be back with the, uh, the research results, and I will show you with more data and uh, like uh, with the practical. Um, how to say uh, the. the uh, with the practical applications. So if we draw the conclusion to our today's talk, like, you know, we know that the governments, they have their certain roles and they have to do, uh, they're forced to reduce the air pollution. But how about us? Like how we can do, how uh, can you help uh, to reduce the air pollution? The first uh, thing is to try to use less gasoline. So if you have car, if you can walk to some distance, it's better to walk. It's good for your health, it's good for the um, environment, it's good for your pockets. Then or buy the cycle, like a bicycle, and then every time, uh, if the, uh, the conditions permit, then you can cycle to your school, to your job. Again, it has really good impacts on uh, many things. So, uh, or uh, try to use the public transportation. So instead of using your car um, every day to drive, uh, maybe you can switch to public transport, which is cheaper and also uh, environmentally friendly. Or uh, if you can afford uh, in your next purchase, try to purchase an electric cars. So, um, but I'm also uh, kind of um, 
happy uh, to one small thing that um, the the internal combustion engines when they uh, they use the gasoline they produce lots of smoke right so all of us agree but uh, uh, as you may know uh, from the local environments there are lots of cars nowadays they're using methane right so um, the the exhaust gas from this uh, burning the, the those uh, liquid uh, petroleum gas uh, is way uh, better than the uh, the uh, than the uh, exhaust of the uh, exhaust coming from the, um, the gasoline engines. So then uh, another thing is what you can do. You try to decrease your electricity usage. So, uh, and then like a uh, try to turn off appliance when you're not um, uh, using them, like a uh, turn, like completely unplug them. Like if you have charger for your phone, for your laptop, or uh, even TVs, so uh, the lights, if you preserve it, so the the, um, the electric uh, electricity uh, generating companies, if they're using um, like a coal to um, gen generate electricity, so they will burn less. If uh, lots of if all of us will uh, do those small small things, so in collective it will be huge impact to our environment. So and then uh, the also. Uh, if you have a place or near uh, near your neighborhood in your house, if you have a, a chance to try to uh, plant uh, lots of trees, okay. And then uh, whenever you you are choosing your next product, uh, be please uh, en environmentally cautious and try to use environment friendly products so that it will help you. So that uh, you will also benefit also the uh, our environment. So now it's very fragile and it needs your help and mine. So uh, thank you for your kind attention. So if you have found the uh, the answer, why there's a seven times increase in the level of ammonia in the Chirchik compared to the busy streets or the blocks uh, in the city. So I will be uh, really uh, helpful, uh, happy to discuss it with you, okay? So um, Dalia, do we have uh, any questions? So I cannot hear you. Thank you so Thank much, you. that's okay. Sorry, I was muted. Can you actually go back to your first slide? Okay. Uh, I think we have a we have an answer that. So, when you put the question, uh, what uh, we actually can see on the screen, yes. your first slide was on the screen. So we have an answer ah, okay. from okay. Mr. Muzahanov who said South, South and Central America. Okay. That, that was the answer. Um, so we have a question and comments. Let me read this comment from US Embassy Tashkent. So great that Uzbekistan is getting a huge wind farm to generate clean energy. Okay. Yes, it was really good news. Uh, I was really happy to see that. All right, we have a question from Gulshan Mahmudova. Thank you for useful information. I wonder if exposure to air pollution may contribute to the spread of virus-related diseases, and in particular to the COVID-19. So... Uh... If I try, okay, the first thing, I'm not a medical doctor, but uh, from my little experience, I could try to um, uh, try to uh, answer uh, the, the, this question because I have uh, seen lots of discussions um, uh, from the uh, top scientists in this field. So uh, uh, like uh, directly doesn't have any um, the connection uh, with the COVID, this air pollution. But uh, the, as a byproduct, uh, the, the air pollution will uh, help the spread of COVID. Why? Because, because of the air pollution, the, the immune system of humans will be really weakened, okay? And their lung will be in a bad condition. So when the uh, COVID virus um, uh, goes into this body, so uh, it, will ha it, will ha it will see the less, um, how to say, um, uh, kind of weakened, uh, it will see a weakened immune system, so it will find easy time to spread. So uh, I wonder if I have answered your question. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Um, well, our um, 
watching friends uh, and ask their questions and answer your question. I want to ask you a question. Um, could you please tell us which cities in Uzbekistan um, were hit by air pollution and what might be the reason for that? So yeah, uh, the one, the uh, the obvious one and the well-known uh, cities or the area is near the uh, Aral Sea area. Uh, they have really uh, bad uh, the conditions because of the dried uh, the Aral Sea. So uh, when the, the the sea dries, so there are uh, lots of contaminants um, uh, that went to the bottom of the sea when there was lots of water. Okay. Uh, also, there are lots of chemicals that were used for the, uh, the for the production of the cotton. The old chemicals went into the Aral Sea and they uh, stayed on the seabed. But now we don't have water, so the old chemicals are now rising to the air. So that is the uh, one, uh, the particular problem of these, those areas. Uh, another thing is we have uh, Fergana Valley, right? The Andijan Namangan Fergana, and the whole valley is like surrounded by the uh, by by mountains. So it's like a bowl bowl area. And then uh, in the winter, when they have a problem with the gas and heating, so the whole like uh, the valley, they they use the the like the wooden like coal, uh, then they use the wood to burn the cook and heat, and then uh, that's why when uh, when you go to these those area uh, in the winter time in the evening, so you can see the like whole region is covered by smoke, so they have very uh, heavy smoke, and this is really bad for the condition of uh, the people who is living in the valley. Uh, but the, the problem, the another problem is their location. They are like, like deep on the bottom of the bowl. So from geograph geographical point of view, they have very small chance to clean it. It's very difficult because it's inside it, inside the mountain. So those are those uh, two most, uh, how to say, uh, like really air polluted, like unfortunate places uh, in our country, I, fi I, I find. Thank you. Uh, actually, going back to your question, could this be a reason that uh, geographical location for uh, being a polluted area? So your question was about particular Chirchik, right? Ah, the, yes. Uh, no, no, it is a little bit different. So mm -hmm. uh, it is interesting question, like uh, really, like if you can uh, like compare like uh, the busy city, city center, like you can think, ah, this is the worst place. Yes, of course, uh, they have bad air uh, quality, but uh, but in Chichi, there is a, like uh, the amount of ammonia gas is like seven times higher. So, uh, uh, like when you if you are like attentive to details, when you see the uh, the data and try to analyze, like very interesting things you can extract. For example, uh, why it happens. So I, the first time I was also wondered, and then I started to do the research, and I found that they have uh, ammonia uh, factory in the Chichi. So they have a huge uh, the, uh, the factory that manufactures ammonia, and they have some leakage to the around surrounding the the places uh, to surrounding villages. So that's why we have seven times higher amount of ammonia than the city, but uh, which is like uh, it's not expected. Oh, okay. Thank you. That was interesting. Yeah. That was really interesting and useful. We actually. Um, we don't have um, more questions in the comments, but uh, your session was very informative. Thank you so much. Um, Thank you very much. Facebook and YouTube, so our uh, followers uh, will watch and maybe put their comments and questions afterwards. Thanks again. Um, and I want to thank everyone who watched us today and joined and asked uh, the questions. And see everyone, see you on our next alumni talks. Bye. Thank you. Bye bye.